giant schnauzer on the rampage needs help, or he's history. A cat circus from Moscow? What to do about overweight pets? And a dog that has overcome amazing obstacles. All coming up on this week's Animal Attractions. The dog made me do it. Not a very strong alibi, unless it's in the case of smiling. Almost 100% of pet owners say that their pets make them smile every single day. I'm Megan Blake, and this is Animal Attractions TV, the very special series about the deep affection people have for their pets. And this episode is bound to bring you more than your daily dose of smiles. But first, we're going to meet a very frustrated family whose chaotic canine is tearing their peaceful home apart. They need our pet trainer 911. Jake was meant to be a companion for the Alexander family. Come here. A dog to protect the house and befriend the kids. But his size and unruly energy have taken away any hope of having a fun party. Jake, the kid. If he can't stop knocking the kids over, stealing food okay. out of their hands, and just being a menace, he may find himself out on the streets. He's only three, so he has a lot of puppy left in him. And when you have 100 pounds of puppy running around your house, it is chaos. But he's a big dog and he was rambunctious. And, you know, I work a lot. And so it's Kim and three kids. Don, Don views Jake as just his fourth child. And that has really created some big issues around the house because then Jake doesn't understand his role and his, his place in the family. Jake's favorite thing to do is go swimming. But he, will, he jumps on the kids when they're in the pool. Jake, stop it! Get off the kids! It frightens the kids. Come on, John. Ah! It frightens the baby. There's been plenty of times when I've had to jump in the pool fully clothed because he's jumped in the pool. And, you know, he's near one of the kids, and the kids can't get away from him. Um, and, it, and it all starts from him pushing his way past me through the gate. And I have to be able to control him. Come here. Come here. Get out. Come here. Ah! Kim couldn't control him, and he was digging, and he was constantly filthy, and the it was bringing mud into the whole place. And and Kim was like, it's it's now or never. The dog is going, or the dog is getting trained. The wife told me all about the dog because the husband he works and uh, she's more with the dog, so she told me all about him. And I got the story from the husband, but his story didn't match the wife's, because the wife was kind of stressing with this dog. I asked him, has the dog ever been trained before? And he told me no. Well, the dog that ain't been trained is gonna do what a dog gonna do. How you doing? Hi, Ron. Come on, white. Well, he's a big boy. Yes, he is. Come on in. Natalie, would you take Jake, please? So you, uh, you have that list? The Jake's list had a whole bunch of stuff okay. on it. It's gotten to the point where if we can't break him of these habits, mm -hmm. we're going to have to get rid of him because he's becoming dangerous to the kids. He would play with the husband and take the husband under the water because the dog wanted somebody to grab onto. And so he was doing the kids the same way. So that was very dangerous. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take your dog home for 30 days. Okay. And then when I come back to the house, I'm gonna train you for seven days. Okay. And each day I come here, I'm gonna, when I leave, the dog leaves. Okay. Now we're gonna see, can we train the family? I said, oh goodness, you know, what is he gonna do? Because in all of this, I do love this dog. I mean, and I don't want any harm to come to him. Okay, coach. Okay. If you can't fix him, you can have him. <laughs> I was, um, I was nervous and I was scared but I was kind of happy to have him gone for a month. Bye, Jake. Bye. I was really ready for him to go. Coach White believes in training dogs Please. in his own home because that's the environment the dog will Please. be returned to. In this case, Leave the White family pool Sit. turns into the perfect training tool for Jake's turnaround. Heel. And it's practice every day. Every day we, we working. Wait. The sit down, stay, leave it, drop it, it all comes together. Heel. 
we would take him around the poo and work on him, make him wait. He couldn't get in it till I tell him. And then when I got in it, he couldn't follow me till he's called in to come in. Come here. Come here. Come on. <laughs> and when we tell him to get out, he got to go out. 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 Well, after 30 days, I called the owners up and asked them, are they ready? They said they were ready, and I said, we on our way. When Ron brought him back, um, I cried because I couldn't believe that that was my dog. Hey, hey boy. Hey. But I was really skeptical that he was going to listen to me. Tell him, come here. Say, heel. Heel. Just start, walk, start walking with him. Now turn back towards me. To your right. Uh -huh. So when I'm at the pool gate, how do I make him not barge through me and, you know, run through the gate? So what you do, you leave the leash on him, and you take the leash, and you pull straight back, and you tell him to wait. OK. And he's going to stay behind you, and you walk in first. Then when you go in, you tell him it's OK. OK. And you practice that. So no matter what door I'm going in. Make him wait. I go first. That's right. We work with the husband, work with the wife, and we showed the kids how to make him sit. Okay. And the little girl, she told him down, sit. and he went down. Do it again. There you go. There you go. He shows you what commands that the dog has learned, but he shows you how to work the dog, as he calls it. But basically what he's showing you is how to guide the dog's behavior. But each command is, is set through repetition, and it's very simple. And with respect to the pool and all those other issues, it's a matter of him then showing you what you need to do to to train the dog or modify or hold the behaviors. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Yeah. Well, now that Jake is trained and the, the wife is loving it, because she's been trained. Well, you did real good. Uh, this is your last day. You had your seven days. And here's your dog. If you have any problems with your dog, just give me a call. And it was nice meeting you. Okay, you sure we're ready Thanks. for this? Yep, you're All ready. Right. Thanks, All right. Okay, you take it easy. Thank All right. you. Later. Now he can be with our family in his proper place. And when we're out at the pool, that he can be obedient and he can sit there with us and he can go in the pool when he's allowed. It just takes the pressure off of us because you know, I'm not worried about the kids. I'm not worried about Kim when I'm away at work. I know that when we go somewhere, I'm not gonna have a, a badly misbehaved dog that is gonna cause us problems or be dangerous. So we get to really enjoy him, and he's a great dog. Jake's there to stay. When we think of performing cats, we usually think of the really big ones, like the jaguar in this habitat behind me. The most powerful and stealthy cat in the Western Hemisphere. The jaguar has been a symbol of strength and courage to people for thousands of years, including the ancient Maya Indians, who considered them to be gods. But did you know that household cats can be performers too? It's true. We spoke with the experts at the Moscow Cat Theater, and we found that the secret lies in letting the cats have fun with what they naturally like to do. Take a look. Any breed, any cat can be trained. Uh, females are generally easier, uh, but you're basically you're playing with the cats and discovering their natural abilities, and then just making that into a show and putting them on stage to act that out. <laughs> Moscow Cats Theater is the only performing cat show of its kind in North America. For a long time, it was believed that uh, you can't train a cat. Then in 2005, we started out on Broadway. And uh, after receiving tremendous reviews from critics and fans, uh, continued on to do a national tour, and now we're finishing up our second national tour. When the theater started in Russia, the first cat that was found was a stray. The clown picked up and began working with it, and he discovered these natural abilities. 
Now these days, uh, we work with the ASPCA and a uh, number of animal rights organizations which uh, sometimes provide strays uh, from shelters. And then very often we have cats that uh, do give birth and uh, they're trained right from, the, right from birth. When the clowns are rehearsing with the cats, they are in costume because the cats are used to a certain atmosphere and they're, they're used to their, the clowns being in costume. Uh, so we don't, you wouldn't want to change that because once they get on stage, they might sense a change in that work. When we started the show, we had the ASPCA and a number of animal rights groups sit in backstage to make sure that everything was being done well, everything was completely transparent. Uh, the cats are always kept happy, they're treated as pets. There's also four kitty caretakers that's available on staff 24-7. Uh, the cats will work for a food reward, they have uh, things that they like. That's what is the motivation for them to actually come out on stage. Uh, we have had reviews from every major newspaper in ma major cities. We have traveled in just about every major city in the United States. Uh, we've had sold out shows. Uh, we had to do the second national tour by popular demand because people were just constantly coming uh, to the shows and they really enjoyed it. It's a unique show and it's one of a kind. It's probably that silly little bow you always see in their hair. You know, women see it and say, oh, it's so adorable. Men see it and be like, are you kidding me? Get a real dog. But if your idea of a real dog is energetic, bright, dependable, and fearless, then the Yorkshire Terrier is just as much of a real dog as a bloodhound or a German Shepherd. Whether it's a show dog or just a great companion, the Yorkie is a real dog that can be as much a man's best friend as a woman's. I chose the Yorkshire Terrier because I was in college when I got her and I was living in an apartment so I wanted a dog that could um, be small, easy to take care of. She is hypoallergenic breed so she doesn't shed, uh, doesn't get fleas and she's very easy to, to groom and everything. Um, dogs like Labs with short hair that shed, I'm allergic to and so she doesn't shed at all. Yorkshire Terriers are definitely an indoor breed. She goes to work with me actually every day, so she's inside at work and um, she gets a lot of her exercise inside as well. She gets plenty of exercise just running from one end of my house <laughs> to the other and playing fetch. She definitely has a great personality. She's very friendly. She's not yappy at all. Um, I think when she's a puppy, I socialized her very well, and so that helps a lot. Um, and she's very, she's well behaved, she loves people. Big dogs really don't even intimidate her either. I don't think she knows she's quite as small as she is. Well, most Yorkies are, are perky little dogs. Uh, they, they're in the terrier, terrier breed, which means that uh, they're going to be bouncy little dogs. They're not snappy in most cases, and they're just an all-around good family dog. Well, I think a good health maintenance plan certainly starts with a, an examination when the animals are young by a veterinarian. 
Uh, this, is, this should be followed by vaccinations to make sure that the puppy does stay healthy. Uh, they should uh, get a thorough examination uh, when they're young to make sure that there's no congenital problems that might uh, pop up later on down the line. I think with uh, proper vaccinations, uh, proper food, proper housing, a lot of love thrown in, I think usually you will end up with a healthy dog. It's a great breed for a smaller home, but it's also good if you have you know, a big yard too because she does love to run around and be outside. Um, I think it's a great breed for older individuals as well. I don't know if I'd recommend it for people with young, young kids. Because she's so small, it might be dangerous. Um, it is, it's a good breed for single people or living in the city. Pound for pound, they're packed with enough intelligence and personality to compete with any of the bigger dogs. And if the bow still bothers you, well, without it, you're going to have to get your Yorkie his own dog, specifically a C9 dog. If you're thinking a Yorkie might be for you, well, here's some things you should consider. They're very intelligent. They're very willful. You have to be stronger willed than they are, and you have to be consistent. If you tell them to do something, you have to make them do it, or they're not going to. As to housebreaking, they can be a little harder than some other breeds, but not impossible. You just have to be consistent. They'll do a lot more for you with praise than they will with punishment. Yorkies were originally bred for cotton mills and mines of Yorkshire in England to control rats and even used by miners for sport and rat killing contests. At the same time, they have excelled as a fashion accessory flaunted in women's purses since 1875. So if you're thinking that these Yorkies still are sissy dogs, you need to know that inside this small package lies a fearless heart. No matter what size or shape our pets are in, we love them just the same. But an overweight pet can have serious health problems. The extra weight can cause extra stress on their heart, lungs, liver, and kidneys. It can also make more strain on their joints, making them more prone to arthritis. And then if they develop arthritis, it makes it even harder for them to walk around on those painful joints. Overweight cats and dogs are also predisposed to diabetes which can mean a shorter lifespan. It's a simple equation. If an animal consumes more calories than it burns for energy, it's going to gain weight. So obesity is caused by either too much food or too little exercise. To tell if your pet is overweight, there are a few simple guidelines that you can check at home. First, run your hand over the side of their ribs. You should be able to feel their ribs, but there shouldn't be a very thick layer of fat. Additionally, after their rib cage, when viewed from the top, they should have a nice waistline and tuck in here. They should also tuck up after their rib cage where their belly is. People often make the mistake of using food as a sign of affection, but be careful. Too much can mean big trouble for your pet's health. A common misconception is the dog isn't getting enough food because they're begging, but lots of dogs don't know when to stop. I've treated dogs on emergency that have tried to eat the whole bag of dog food. On the other hand, cats are natural carnivores, so a current thought is that a diet higher in protein and fat might be more effective at helping them lose the weight. If you suspect your pet is overweight, first see your veterinarian. Weight gain can be a sign of disease, and your vet may want to run blood work or other tests and they can also help determine the best diet for your pet to achieve gradual weight loss. You will also need to switch the diet gradually over about five to seven days, slowly adding in the new diet as you slowly decrease the old one. This allows for your dog or cat's digestive tract to slowly adjust to the new diet. Feed multiple times a day, and for cats especially, no more free feeding. With multiple pets, separate them because you will need to monitor just how much your overweight pet is eating and actually measure the amount of food that you are giving. You can start with the recommendation on the bag, but this is just a suggestion for the average dog. Just like people, there is individual variation. But just remember, no grapes or raisins as these are toxic. On the other side of the equation is exercise. 
provide a prolonged opportunity for exercise for dogs a couple times a week. And leaving your dog in the yard by themselves is not an acceptable substitute. Dogs are not usually inclined to exercise on their own. Dog parts and play dates are great opportunities to let your dog run like the wind, even when you don't feel like it. Although a bit more exercise is best for all of us. Cats, of course, are a little different. You can't really put them on a leash and make them run, but you can find a toy that your cat likes, like Catch the Light or a feather toy, that uses their hunting instinct to make them exercise. Believe it or not, overfeeding by just 1% over seven years can make your pet 25% overweight. Unfortunately, it is estimated that 25 to 50% of our dogs and cats are overweight. But the good news is that with proper diet and exercise, you can keep the weight right where it should be. Motivation and inspiration can come in a variety of ways. But can meeting a dog really change people's lives? You better believe it. A dog named Faith was born with only two hind legs. But her story of triumph is almost unbelievable. You've just got to see this. Okay, sometimes in life you're given bad experiences, right? We all know this, we, there's not much we can do about it. But there is something you can do for yourself. You can determine for yourself that you're not going to take it. You're going to have faith in yourself. You're going to show some perseverance. You're going to change something. And so what I did today was I brought someone here to show you in person what it looks like to walk with faith. Okay? <laughs> this is my dog, Faith. As, as I said, walk with faith. Sometimes life gives you bad experiences. This puppy was actually rejected by her own mother because she could not suckle. She could not walk or be like a normal dog. My son rescued her and we trained her to be a normal dog, a natural dog. That was our intent, just to train her to be what she was meant to be. And in life, you may have to train yourself to be exactly what you were supposed to be. And you may not know right now, but through challenges and prayer and perseverance and asking yourself over and over, is this really what I was meant for? Is this what I'm supposed to do? You'll find it. And just like Faith, sometimes it takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> Bye -bye. Come on, Faith. About three years ago, Faith became a member of our family. The first time I saw Faith, I said, Reuben, this dog doesn't have front legs. And he's like, I know. What are we going to do? And at first I thought, how sad. It's so dirty and, and ugly. But then I saw her eyes, and her eyes had a whole different look, a different story, a, a survival look, looking at me as if she knew I was her only hope. And she looked at me like, you are going to help me, aren't you? Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was good Thank to you. see you all again. Good to see you. Hi. Mama. Uh -huh. Do you want to pet her? Yeah. The people's reactions to faith vary. The first initial is, wow, I've never seen that before, or that's different, or that's cool. I have had a few people that found it sad, but uh, after they see her, meet her, speak with her, talk with her, they see that she's not sad. She's a happy dog, and she doesn't know any different, so they shouldn't be sad. My veterinarian has been my veterinarian for a long time, and I trust her. And she looked at Faith, and she said, you've got a problem. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. The prognosis is not good. This puppy will not survive unless she can get off her chest and off her chin and walk like a human. She just would not do it on her own. So we actually just lifted food up above her nose levels to force her to put her head up. And when we did this, she realized you can have the food up here, but you can't have the food down here. It had snowed outside pretty deep, pretty deep snow. Uh, we looked at each other and we said, we can always take the puppy outside in the snow. That's, not, that's a lot of fun. So we did. We took her outside and literally placed her in the snow on her rear end, just stuck her there and walked away and took pictures <laughs> because we're cruel that way. But we, we took pictures of her because she's had the expression immediately of, wow, this is cold or what am I going to do now? and we stood there waiting for her to make the move. And when she did, when she took one hop, that's all it took. We put her on a skateboard to show her how motion, how motion was and how movement felt. She could see the other pets moving in front of her. She was content to watch them. She was content to see them go by. And we wanted her to mingle and be a part of it. We tried toys, <laughs> we tried everything. But the one thing that got her up and moving was an old dirty sock. 
And so we had an old dirty sock that we uh, let, let, you know, tug of war with the other dogs, and she got involved, and she forgot her problem. She would stand up even and sit back down, and stand up and sit back down, and stand up and sit back down. And when they'd drag her around, she'd just let them drag her around, and finally she'd use those back legs to stop herself and say, I don't have to go that far. I can, I can stop right here, and I can win this game. So we know that she's a normal dog. She likes to play outside in the rain. She loves the ocean. You know, she chases geese into the water, just like any other dog. She doesn't quite swim like other dogs. It looks a little different, but she can swim. And she loves going on walks, and we take her shopping with us. But I think, think something that she really enjoys doing that um, any normal dog would like to do is just going to the park. Just going to the park, laying down, watching people, playing with other dogs. And when people see her and they relate to her story, perhaps um, children with diabetes is, is something I can point out because a, a child with diabetes who had his arm amputated was sad. He'd already determined that you know he wasn't going to survive. He wasn't going to he wasn't going to go through with it. And then once he met Faith, and, and we talked for quite a long time, a couple of hours, he decided you know I, I might be able to do this. And so we've agreed to email each other and talk with each other over the next few months to just help him out with some of his needs. When life gets tough, when things don't go our way and we're challenged, it's okay to, to reach out and ask for help or just have a little faith. That was amazing. All right, well, thank you for joining us here on Animal Attractions. And if you'd like any more information on the features you've seen here today, please visit our website at www.animalattractionstv.com. We'll see you next time. Take care.